Good morning, first grade. How is everyone doing today? I hope you're having a nice day so far. All right, we have another deep dive today, and we're going to return to talking about prepositions and specifically using prepositional phrases. So this is something that both Ms. Taylor and I have talked with you about before. And so before we talk about prepositional phrases, let's just first quickly review what are prepositions? Do you remember what prepositions are? Yeah, those are the words that can tell the location of a noun. They can help to give a little bit more information. Like the book is on the table. And if you remember, we did an activity where you took a picture of something, uh, some items, and showed you know that maybe your stuffed animal was under the chair or your book was on the desk. And here on the screen are some examples of prepositions. In, up, near, over, with, to, around, beneath, on, by, under, and at are all examples of prepositions. So today we're going to practice and talk about how using prepositional phrases can help to improve our writing. Okay, so when you sit down to write a sentence and when, when you kind of first start to write, you may come up with a shorter sentence, a sentence that may only have, you know, maybe three or four words. So let's look at an, look at an example of a sentence that, you know, is a little bit shorter of a sentence. So here, this goes along with what we've been learning about with in, in Never Smile at a Monkey. It says, animals defend themselves. Animals defend themselves. You know, it's a good sentence. It's a complete sentence. It starts with the capital, ends with punctuation. But when I read this sentence, it makes me think of some questions that I have because it's not giving me a ton of information, just this sentence as it is, right? I would be thinking to myself, well, well how, how do they defend themselves? Or well, where do they defend themselves? Or why do they defend themselves? And the way that we can add some additional details to our sentences to make them, um, you know, provide a little bit more information and detail and better communicate with our you know, reader or whoever's uh, reading or listening to our sentences. We can use prepositional phrases to help include some additional information in our sentence and kind of take our three or four word sentence and, you know, how we start writing when we're in kindergarten, that's how we learn to put together a sentence. Now it's like we're kind of taking it to the next level and adding these prepositional phrases to provide some, some extra detail. So let me show you. So in this particular sentence, animals defend themselves. We could use prepositions and prepositional phrases to help answer these questions. So let's look at some specific examples from our text, Never Smile at a Monkey. Okay, so here's a sentence. The platypus has venomous spurs. Okay, it's a complete sentence, sounds pretty good, but when I hear that sentence, I might be wondering, well, where do they have venomous spurs? And this is where a prepositional phrase can come in handy. Where do they have venomous spurs? Yeah, on its hind legs. Here, on its hind legs, whoops, is the prepositional phrase that can add some detail to this sentence. So now look, we have really added some great detail. We've expanded the sentence and we've given our reader some more information. The platypus has venomous spurs on its hind legs, right? That sounds better than just the platypus has venomous spurs. It adds some extra detail. The second sentence, the cone shell hunts and defends itself. Hmm. So I know that that's an interesting sentence that cat that catches my attention. But I'm thinking to myself, well, how do they do that? How how does a cone shell hunt and defend itself? And how does it do that? Yeah, with poisoned barbs. So here, this prepositional phrase with poisoned barbs can help add some additional detail to this sentence. Give me one period. There we go. This, the third one. The hippopotamus charges to attack. 
hmm, the hippopotamus charges to attack. So I'm wondering, well, why do they do that? Or when do they do that? That's probably useful information to know when a hippopotamus would charge or why a hippopotamus would charge or how, right? And the, the hippopotamus charges to attack with its enormous mouth and tusks. So I can add that to this sentence. So here's the prepositional phrase, and I'm going to add that to this sentence to again, just give a little bit more information and detail to my reader and really, you know, make that a better sentence, add some details that helps to make that, um, you know, a more clear sentence that gives my, you know, gives the reader some more information. All right, let's quickly take a look at these next two. A mother bear protects her cubs. So again, we could ask, well, from what or why? And we can see a mother cub protects her cubs from danger. That's the prepositional phrase that we could add to just kind of make that sentence a little bit better, right? And lastly, a cobra spits. A cobra spits. It's, it's a complete sentence, but it's like it's just leaving me having some questions and wanting some more information. A cobra spits, well, how? for more than eight feet. I mean, that's pretty interesting, for more than eight feet. This is the prepositional phrase that we can add to this sentence to, again, just like with the other sentences, help to give a little bit more information, a little bit more detail, kind of take our sentences to the next level, right? All right, so what we're going to do, what you're going to do is practice taking the beginning of a sentence and adding a prepositional phrase to it to just kind of like we said, take that sentence to the next level, provide some additional detail to make the sentence even better and give some extra information to your reader. So in your Wit and Wisdom Module 2 workbook, the one with the hair on it, on page 29B or handout 29B, it looks like this, so when you're working on it, you would have to turn your workbook this way. It says, directions, finish the sentence with a prepositional phrase and draw a picture to illustrate it. And the sentence frame at the bottom says, I found my toy blank. And they're giving you suggestions, um, if you'd like to use the suggestions of either in or by. If there's another preposition and then prepositional phrase that you would like to use instead, that's fine. I found my toy, you know, under my bed, or I found my toy in the toy box, or I found my toy by the kitchen table. You can use one of those two prepositions that they give you to start your prepositional phrase, or like I said, you can pick a different one. But we just want to finish the sentence to Kind of, like I said, take it to the next level, add a little more detail, really get a good first grade sentence with, you know, more than just a couple of words, provide that extra detail, and then you can draw a picture to show where your toy is, um, you know, with the preposition that you chose and the prepositional phrase. All right, when you are finished with that, you can snap a quick picture of this and send it through on the Seesaw activity, and we can't wait to see your sentences. There is a handout 29A, so just um, you just want to make sure that you find the one that says 29B, okay? And then you have to flip it. All right, all right. So great job. I will see everybody soon. And thanks again. Let us know if you have any questions.